This is Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner. I'm Mike Howard. Representative, thanks for coming into the studio to talk about uh, the state budget and where we stand halfway through the 2010 sure. legislative session. No trouble coming in. We were just here for the last <laughs> thing. No, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, on Facebook or, uh, or on cable. Uh, yeah, obviously one of our major constitutional responsibilities is to make sure we have a balanced budget. On a, we have a two-year budget. Uh, the budget changed since uh, we got through the session last year and we had a $1.2 billion deficit out of about a $33 billion deficit, so you know about 3 or 4%. Uh, then we got a new forecast showing that it was only a billion dollars. Uh, the governor is going to sign here in a few days uh, a bill that would cut the first third of that billion, about $313 billion. Uh, that is in every category of the budget except uh, uh, K through 12 education and health and human services. Uh, so that's in all the other areas in the budget. We did that uh, uh, fairly quickly. We uh, wanted to take that bull by the horns fairly quickly. Uh, I'm on the tax committee, and I can tell you that we did not uh, cut as much as the governor was proposing for cities and counties. Uh, most of the cities I represent don't get any local government aid, but they have gotten a market value homestead credit, which actually helps reduce your property taxes. A lot of that has gone away over the last few years because of our budget situation and it's not likely to be there in the next few years. But the cities of Lexington and Circle Pines do get a substantial amount of local government aid. Uh, we think that the cuts we made were uh, more precise than the governor was proposing. So uh, we don't think that'll result in any 2010 property tax increases. Uh, it's possible that we could see that in 2011. Um, okay, so we got a third of that billion through 313 million. Uh, and the rest of it, uh, for the most part, would come from health care and human services. Uh, and we've, had, we've waited on figuring out how to get the rest of that issue solved because uh, we're waiting for some federal legislation to become clearer. Uh, even before the federal health care program passed about uh, a week and a half ago, uh, we knew that there was from some federal money coming from Medicaid. And the state funds half of Medicaid for people with disabilities and people in nursing homes. 600,000 people in Minnesota are on Medicaid. Uh, the stimulus package to include a greater than 50-50 match, so it was like 40-60. Now it might be something like that into the future. So we don't know exactly how much money we'd get from that. But it could be about $400 million. So that leaves us with $300 million. Uh, because of the General Assistance Medical Care Program, we're going to save about $150 million. So that gets us down to, um, I think it's 150. Yeah, get out your calculator and, uh, and right. try to figure this so, out. Yeah, uh, what we have to do in the next uh, couple of weeks is figure out how to uh, cut $150 million from the Health and Human Services budget. Uh, there's going to be some painful cuts, but uh, they could have been worse. And uh, um, we're still waiting to see how federal health care reform would uh, impact us. It'll all be to the good, I think, uh, but a lot of the changes won't kick in for several years. So we have to figure out how... Uh, you know, our general assistance medical care program fits into that. So it sounds like with the budget Is so that wonky far, enough for you? <laughs> I think okay. we, we got plenty of details, but the, the, big, <laughs> the big picture, uh, with a third of it done, those cuts were kind of focused on where you can find agreement, and then it's kind yeah. of wait and see, make sure you know, understand the federal package, right. and then and, pursue and then the on, next and round. And on the K-12 area, you know, we have budget targets where we actually say, here's the total amount, the whole pie, and here's how we carve out the pie, and we'll figure out what all the ingredients are in each slice, you know. And, but we know that uh, for K through 12, for example, we're only going to cut one million dollars, and that is from the state Department of Education. So that's really just an overhead and not in the classroom. Uh, we know that schools are uh, struggling, but um, uh, we're going to see what we can do in that area as we move forward. But uh, we wouldn't see any cuts in K through 12. Uh, we've only got about a minute left, and I know you have some specific legislation uh, that's also moving through the process related to domestic abuse. Uh, Laws yeah, that uh, could be part of a package coming forward. Yeah, so. there should be an omnibus uh, domestic violence uh, bill, and I have a bill uh, that relates to having one of those GPS locator devices on uh, batterers if they're out of jail, so that um, uh, the court system could uh, require the use of that, just so that the uh, the victim knows where that person is, or that they know that they're not in close proximity. And I think that's a, a, that will be a positive step, and we'll probably talk about that next time. Well, as the legislative session heats up again when you come back, I know you encourage folks to contact you with their questions and their comments and to visit Absolutely. your blog. Yep, and you can certainly go to uh, uh, www.house.mn to find me 
uh, or go to my blog. If you just Google my name, uh, Paul Gardner, and the word blog, you'll find me. Thanks for joining us. With lots more wonky details. Very good. This has been Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner. Thanks, everybody.